Oh, thank you for the patience. Okay, I think last week, uh, Pastor Paul went over the Rainbow Covenant, right? The Rainbow Covenant. And we learned that it's only one of the eight covenants God made with mankind, right? And it shows a repetition of God's effort to redeem us in the middle of us failing God every time. But God is faithful. He keeps on making these covenants with us even we fail him every time, right? And after the flood, God promised that he was to put down his bow, his weapon, right? And not to wipe out humanity as long as the earth endures until the new heavens and earth is here. This is just a recap, right? <laughs> Last week. And we learned that there was a lot of darkness and evil in Noah's time and also today. Even today's world is full of darkness, right? A lot of bad things happening in today's world, but it was much worse back then in Noah's time. Because today, right, a lot of us are trying to follow God, trying our best to follow God. Even now, every Christian is sinless, but there are a lot of us trying our best, choosing to be on God's side, right? But in Noah's time, Noah and his family were the only ones left. Can you imagine such a world? It's beyond our imagination. We know there's a lot of darkness, but it's not comparable to that time, right? So if you think today's world is disappointing and full of darkness, let's imagine Noah's time. All right, so, and if you thought to, if you start to think why God allows evil even to exist, right? Why does God allow temptations to go on among us and why does God offer that one tree even in the garden as an option to tempt us away from him this is what we're talking about today we're talking about temptations in 5d so first things first when we talk about temptations what usually pops up in your head is it K-dramas? Is it ice cream? Is it shopping? Is it gaming? Um, while all these are temptations at some point, right? But this is not an O, right? This is not exactly the temptation we're talking about from the Bible. Temptations from the Bible points to Satan's lies to tempt us away from God and from the teaching of God. Right? You see, in Genesis, it states when the relationship between God and human is broken, so is the relationship between human and other living creatures and between human and the earth. So, Satan's lies are what causes divisions between people and people with God, and this is the temptation we're talking about today. Okay? So, we can have pleasure, we can, we can have, enjoy all these fun, we can have all of this in Christ as long as we put God and God's teaching over these pleasures. And I'll be sharing with you a couple of my own struggles with temptations later in the sermon. Okay, stay tuned. Now remember, temptation is not a sin, it's just a call to battle. And don't worry, we will battle together, okay? You're not alone. We will battle together as a family of Christ. And remember, the church is not law enforcement, right? We're here to encourage each other and not to defeat each other, okay? Because it's Satan's job to defeat and not ours. Now, I know we've been reading uh, Genesis chapter 1 for a while, maybe many times already. Um, but to understand why God allows evil and temptations, let's review a few things here. So please bear with me, all right? Now, before we go into scripture, let's pray. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to review the creation story as a church. We know there's a lot of um, unknowns and wisdoms behind. However, Lord, just help us to focus on what we can focus on today. Help us to focus on what you want to tell us first and help us to learn and gain wisdom in you. Help us to humble our hearts before you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So going back to Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. 
I know we went over many times, but want to highlight something here, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. So we learned that from this passage, that before God created the world as we see it today, it was stark and orderless. The world was empty and chaotic. And God said, let there be light. And there was light, right? God saw that light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Now, here's a question. Did God remove darkness by his light? Did God just wipe out all the darkness? Did he? Not really, right? Let's, the answer is no. He separated only. He separated light from darkness only. Now, what does it mean? It simply means God is creating order out of chaos, and he is allowing darkness to remain temporarily. Now, this is even more profound, right? Why didn't God just wipe out the darkness? Why didn't God just remove darkness? And a lot of us want to ask, why put the temptation tree in the middle of the garden, right? Why did God allow evil to exist in Eden? Why not just put the tree of life everywhere? And so that we can all live a ever, uh, live a happily ever after life, right? Why was there a tree to enable us to fall in the first place? It's a really good question, right? Now, even the Bible does not clearly disclose the reason why, right? However, the Bible teaches two facts. Fact number one is darkness will be removed one day, just not right now. Revelation 22, uh, 15 says, there will be no more nights. Yeah, I think Pastor Gideon went over this already, right? Just a, a quick recap. For the Lord God will give them light. So you see, Genesis is the beginning, and Revelation is the end of the Bible. Genesis did not talk about why there was darkness, but God did say darkness will be removed one day. It's part of God's plan, just not right now, all right? And this is why we always say to trust God. God's timing. We know the ending, right? It's, we're going to have a good ending. So a little short review so far. God created light in the middle of darkness. Darkness will be removed one day, just not right now. Okay, fact number two. Jesus was also born in a world full of darkness. He was not born in heaven, and he was not born in a greenhouse. Jesus was tempted by darkness the very same way, exactly the same way like Adam and Eve were tempted. So now God did not make it impossible for Jesus to sin. Jesus was totally capable to sin, only that he did not, right? The same tree of knowledge of good and evil, let's call it KGE, right, in short. The same tree of KGE was offered to Jesus as well. As a matter of fact, Adam and Eve failed the first temptation by Satan, but Jesus, on the other hand, was tempted multiple times, not just one time, right? But Jesus still held on tight to the truth and did not sin. This is very interesting, right? God did not protect Jesus with a rain suit and did not set a virus protection formula to make Jesus harm-free. This is rather a complicated concept, but it's called the Im impec <laughs> impeccability of Christ, okay? And we can go over this during a coffee chat if you want. Yeah, it's, we can go over this in another message. But Pastor Justin, our beloved PJ, right, he also offered another insight, which I really love. He said, the tree of KGE represents a real choice for mankind to exercise our free will. So if you offer a menu, right, let's say espresso number one and ex espresso number two, and you ask, what's the difference? And the waiter goes, there's no difference. Then you're not offered a real choice to choose, right? So the tr tree of KGE represents a real choice that we can choose 
to not follow God. As a matter of fact, there are many more trees that are edible in Eden, and Adam and Eve were surrounded by tons and tons of edible fruits, but only one tree that's not edible. So we can't really blame God for setting them up, right? So now let's take a deeper look into Adam and Eve's test. Genesis 3.1, Satan said to the woman, what did Satan say? Satan asked, did God really say, right? You must not eat from any tree in the garden. Today, Satan likes to ask the same question, right? Did God really say? He always asks that. Did God really say marriage is between a man and a woman? Did God really say to love your enemies? Did God really say one save, always save? Or did God really say you cannot smoke? Did God really say you cannot gamble? And many more, right? What do you think? Did God really say that? Like, I really encourage all of us to ask these questions, right? We, we can sit down and chat over these things together. And we need to read the Bible ourselves humbly and academically. It's important that we get the answer from the Bible, unlike Eve, right? So that we know if God really said it or not. Let's continue and see how Eve responds, right? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say. Now, Eve sounded really sure. God did say that, right? Let's see what she's so sure about, right? You must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Okay, now wait a second. Did God say you must not touch it? Did God say that? What do you think? Let's see what God did say, right? This is what God said to Adam. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Right? Clearly, God did not mention not to touch the tree, right? God did not say that. So we see how important it is that we understand the word of God fully, not partially, right? If clearly did not understand why or why not to touch the tree or why or why not to eat from the tree. She didn't know. She didn't know the concept or intention behind it. She did not know the will of God. And because of this, Eve failed. Now let's quickly go over how Jesus overcomes the temptation. Jesus overcame the temptation by the word of God. When the devil challenged him, Bible knowledge, right? Oh, there we go. Jesus countered Satan also by the word of God. Luke 4, 5 says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. The devil said, If you're the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Sounds really familiar, right? Do you know there's still a lot of good number of Christians today, they like to quote the same Bible verse and throw themselves in dangerous situations, claiming God will protect them no matter what. And I have heard a terrible story in which some pastors, they kept praying for the sick at the deathbed, right? And ordering the sick to get up and be healed. And if the sick is not getting up, he's blamed for not being faithful enough. It's a true story, right? It's, it's terrible, but it's a true story. And there was this other church even praying to resurrect a dead to toddler girl. They kept praying for days. They, they claim. God listens to prayers, right? But they were forcing God to resurrect the girl. I mean, God listens to prayers when we pray for his will to be done and not our own self-centered wills, right? God's will is to save all and not just for the purpose of our selfish needs. So it's ridiculous to think we can be reckless, right? And 
and move God's hands to fulfill our self-centered wishes. It doesn't work that way. And that's why even as Christians, we still need to wear a mask. We need to do appropriate safety measures in the pandemic, right? We try our best and let God do the rest. Now, Jesus did his miracles and signs and resurrections in the New Testament so that people can know God. He did not perform those miracles because he wants to show off his superpower, right? Remember Jesus feeding the 5,000 story? Jesus does not want people to only see his power and make him king. Jesus wants to save, and Jesus always, always puts the will of God before his. And this is how Jesus answered the devil. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, what does that mean? Simply means trust in God's timing and pray for God's will be done. Don't do silly, selfish things to see if God is real, right? So Jesus was tempted at least, at least three times, right? Versus the one time with Adam and Eve. And Luke says the devil only left Jesus temporarily each time. Luke 4.13 says, when the devil had finished all the tempting, he left him until an opportune time. So you see, even with Jesus, the devil knows he is the son of God, right? But Satan only left him temporarily. So how about you and how about me? Temptation is real. Even for those of us who are faithful, who come to church every Sunday, the reality is Satan won't leave us alone. So don't dream about for a second that me or you or Pastor Gideon, any pastor or even the Pope, it's free of temptation from Satan. No way. It's not real. Even Jesus Satan did not give up on Jesus. He kept on coming back to Jesus. So what about you and me? We, we struggle with sin and temptations every day, right? Now, let me share a couple of my own struggles, right? The first one has to do with um, my relationship with God, putting pleasure first or God first, right? And, and I really love binge watching YouTube a lot, especially during the pandemic, right? Um, I like to watch those like 15 minute movie. I'm not sure if you watch it before. Like, you know, this person summarizing the entire movie for you and showing you like fast forward scenes. And I watched the entire series of um, Squid Game in one hour, right? Um, if you ask like, what's wrong with watching YouTube? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with watching YouTube. I learned a lot from these videos actually, but it becomes a problem when I binge watch. Like it gives me a huge headache because I was watching too much, right? And worse yet, I couldn't slow myself down. I was losing patience. And I started to have problems sitting still, honestly. And worse yet, I started to get really frustrated easily when things just don't move as fast as I wanted. I realized it started to become a problem. And so I prayed to God to help and intervene, right? I pray continually for a couple of weeks while I continue the binging. But slowly and gradually, God diverted my attention to serving the E-Zone ministry, right? So I, I start to spend a lot of time like serving this ministry, and I didn't have time to binge watching YouTube, right? And instead of watching you, like videos, I was making videos. And I really thank God for giving, this, giving me this opportunity. However, temptations are still here, right? I still, I still enjoy watching YouTube as much as I can. It's my way to relax. But thank God he gave me now this opportunity to serve the church. So now I can watch YouTube and find videos and graphics to share with the youths. I find myself excused to, to, to watch YouTube, so I, I, I didn't prepare a video today, but usually I insert uh, one or two uh, funny videos. But I really enjoy this, this time preparing messages and PowerPoints for sermon. 
um, I really enjoy spending the time here, and I don't prefer YouTube over this. I prefer preparing over YouTube, and I thank God for walking me out of the binging. I am not saying that we have to quit our bad habits right away. We can pray as we continue these habits, but allow God to intervene, wait for God's timing, right? And follow God with an open heart. It's very important. And we will experience a transformation from within and not by force. So I think pleasures are good until we put pleasure over God, right? And there's this one more thing that's called delay gratification. I think a lot of us have heard about this and uh, we, we, we taught about this in CM, but I think this is not just for kids, it's for all of us, even adults. We have to learn to master this, right? Uh, so people who are able to wait to enjoy are able to enjoy the best and are more successful in our lives. When we lose self-control and don't want to wait, to enjoy these pleasures at the right timing, it will lead to destruction if we put pleasure over God. And also, if you wonder, like if there are certain videos or dramas, is it appropriate for me to watch? Um, my own way of evaluation is we can watch this with Jesus sitting next to me. I always do this. Jesus is sitting next to me. If I feel comfortable to watch with Jesus and put him first, watch all you want, right? Just develop that relationship with Jesus first and seek wisdom in God. We cannot overcome temptations alone, but we can only do it with Jesus because Jesus is the only one who overcame all the temptations himself. And also we have to read the Bible Sorry, my graphics are a little, like, youth-like, right? <laughs> Can we go to the next slide? Did it stop? Yeah, there we go. So never stop reading the Bible because Jesus is the word of God. I mean, he's not just an imaginary friend. We can imagine Jesus sitting next to us, but that's not all. Jesus is the word of God. We have to overcome temptation also by the word of God. I'm very happy that we're going through this Genesis um, campaign. We can spend time uh, reading the Bible together as a church, and that is one way we can overcome temptations together, right? So I have to move faster, right? My first struggle with temptation is about pleasures. Now, my other temptation struggles are about relationships with brothers and sisters and family. Sometimes we're so focused on right or wrong, right? Your principles, my boundaries with people so much. We, we care so much of what makes us feel comfortable. And Satan uses these opportunities to cause divisions in church and in families. Now, even Pastor Anders, my husband, and I serve the church together. We sometimes have like differences in opinions, right, in a lot of the areas. And we saw Satan almost, almost did his trick on us each time, especially before like big evangelical events. We have a lot of disagreements. But thank God we were able to identify Satan's works, right? After some encounters and experiences, we put our guns together and fire at Satan instead of at each other. So we have to be alert, identify Satan's lies, and put our relationship first, especially in church, right? And don't let Satan prevail. Sinning, it's super easy. easy. It's very easy. It's very tough to not sin in a day-to-day -day life. It's so easy, especially living in today's world, right? But if we choose to believe in Christ, who overcame all temptations himself and let him be king, instead of letting our desires to be king, then we will thrive. Now, have you heard about spiritual inflation? Uh, we know there's inflation going on, economic inflation going on, right? But there's also spiritual inflation. 
just like the stock market, sometimes when we remain in Christ, some days we're more holy, we're more spiritual, um, and you know we're prayer angels and all, but some days we might not be, right? But it's okay as long as we remain in Christ, our spirituality will inflate. And let's look at Abraham's inflation chart, right? His peak was when he offered Isaac, but look at his curve. He wasn't just, he didn't start his way as the father of faith in the beginning, right? So it's okay to fail, just don't leave God. And we need each other to hold each other's hands and not to leave God. And this is probably, only probably, right? Why God allows darkness to exist temporarily so we can have this spiritual inflation in him, right? And remember, darkness will not leave us alone. We cannot overcome the temptations, but Jesus can, and he did it with the word of God. So sorry for being so long-winded. We have to read the Bible, keep each other in prayer, and we have to keep each other accountable in Christ. Lastly, before we wrap up, unlike many photos you find online, right? Satan doesn't always look like the devil. It doesn't look like an ugly man. Satan can look really pretty too. And sometimes she can look really wise, right? Genesis 3, 6 says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it, right? Even Eve thought she was gaining some kind of wisdom, which in her head, it's a good thing, right? Wisdom is a good thing, but sadly, not any wisdom can protect her from harm. Today, we study a lot of subjects in college and in life, and we all care about academics and uh, maybe for philosophy, uh, a lot of scholarly subjects, Worldly wisdom may look desirable or good for food, but this is not the wisdom that can help us connect to God. We have to put the wisdom of God first in the most important place, right? We all say one life, one chance, right? Without connecting to God, there's no life. And with, without life, what is the wisdom for, right? We have to take this chance and put the wisdom of God first and not just any wisdom. In conclusion, we have to identify temptations as Satan's voices telling us to not put God first, right? He wants us to put pleasure over God. And Satan's temptation always causes divisions between brothers and sisters and in families so that we cannot glorify God as the body of Christ. So we have to be alert, be smart, we have to hold on tight to the word of God and point our guns to the enemy and not each other. Overcoming these temptations does not make us like more holy, more obeying or better citizens, but overcoming temptations gives us this freedom to enjoy this relationship with God and with each other, even with the animals, so that we can have better emotions, healthier spiritual life, we can have better self-identity, more stable personality, and this pleasure lasts forever. Unlike um, if we follow K-drama, there's an end to it, we play games, there's, it always go, is out of trend, right? But Jesus' fashion is always trendy and it's forever. Now, if we remember anything we talked about today, um, just remain in Christ, simply remain in Christ. Let's read the Bible together, encourage each other, and count on that spiritual inflation because we know that darkness will be removed one day, just not right now. We have to keep on fighting, right? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for allowing Christians from different parts of the world gather together on a Sunday there's a lot of preaching going on. We're all preaching from the Word of God. We're all preaching from the Bible. Um, it's really hard to stay in the Word of God. Lord, we need your help. Um, it, it's not entertaining. It's not as entertaining as 
you know, gaming and then watching YouTube. But Lord, we know that this is what gives us eternal life. And this is the wisdom, the only wisdom that can give us life. So help us to have the wisdom to put you first as well, Lord. Um, we can be easily diverted. Uh, we're easily attracted by the world. So we need your help. Holy Spirit, Jesus, Father, help us. Um, fight for us. Help us to encourage each other, remain in you as a body of Christ, and keep each other accountable. And we do this all in you, in your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.